Guys, so either one of you or both of you, can you give us a quick rundown of what Liquid Apps is? Oh, what Liquid Apps is? It's a good, it's a good question. Uh, and actually, we uh, spent a lot of time to ask this ourselves because we had a, a good technology, a solid technology, uh, a patent that already been filed. But what do we do with all this? And what uh, both me and Tal uh, uh, agreed upon is it's what needed right now is the best, solid, easy way for developers to build on top of decentralized blockchains and EOS in specific in a way that will be affordable and simple. This is what Liquid Apps is. That's what we're trying to bring. Welcome back to part two of a three-part series about the DAP network here on Everything EOS, the longest running EOS podcast. Everything EOS is always sponsored by Cypherglass. You can support this channel by voting for Cypherglass using your favorite wallet or block explorer. Now I'm not going to waste any more time. Let's get to it. Was it a project I that was built out of personal necessity because you were working on other projects, building other things, and you were hitting these these bottlenecks and the, these price limitations? Like I, I saw a recent blog article, the free accounts that are, are now possible because of it. So was it a product of necessity for you guys? So while building Liquid EOS and uh, being in the block producer world, we understood the tech really, really well. Tal and the rest of the team dug into the code but one day I got a call from Tal telling me he found something. And I have to tell you that I was like, skeptic is <laughs> a small way to interrupt, interpret what I went through. I'm like, Tal, stop lying to me. <laughs> Tal, it's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to allow Tal to, to tell you his side of the story. Right. So, I there are two aspects, I think. There's the DAP network and the, and the DAP layer itself, which is a vision. Um, it's not an opportunistic uh, or, or, or tactic uh, solution for a very specific problem, but it's more of a vision that, that um, we feel very strongly about, about uh, bridging the gap between what developers already know and are used to in terms of operating systems and frameworks and 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 the blockchain that's supposed to to be an alternative for that now um, so a paging mechanism like vram is is a, is one thing um, but specifically when i worked on that uh, on, on that solution um, I wasn't trying to, to build a paging mechanism. I was actually trying to create an uh, airdrop that's, uh, that's free. Um, and it evolved from uh, having, um, being able to read a, a large data set um, that's stored uh, on the chain history, but being indexed with proofs, with Merkle proofs, uh, to basically prove that, that what you're reading is, is correct. Mm -hmm. And and I think it took me a couple of days to understand that this kind of mechanism can also be used to provide the other direction, writing. Easier said than done, but, but I pursued it without really knowing if that's something that I'm going to be able to do. Um, and, I, and one day it uh, just, I think a, a couple of days later, after I built the, the first prototype, uh, I was able to read and write and, and do everything seamlessly. And that, that, that's the point when I called Benny. Um, <laughs> so I think, I think it's, it's really understandable that, that he didn't believe me because I, I presented <laughs> it. You, you remember the RAM thing, the limitation with the 80, mm -hmm. 90 gigabytes? You, you mean people weren't happy to spend 20 plus thousand dollars on an airdrop right. to give something away for free people didn't like spending all that money to give stuff away for free right and, and we were and, and we were uh highly involved in 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 the ram price in general because it's yeah. the, 
of our of our knowledge in the Banco algorithm and and uh, proposing solutions. So it's not something that was uh, um, new to us. This, new this to problem. Us, yeah. It's something we focused on. And suddenly, um, when I called Benny, where he <laughs> was already really aware of the limitation and the problem, and said, "Listen, I th there's a way not to increase the." limited supply to 80 gigabytes, but we can basically provide terabytes. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> so in the first prototype, actually, I, I loaded I load two terabytes on, on the first data set on, on, on like on my local node. So so I, I called him and I said, listen, I stored a terabyte in content <laughs> on, on, a, on, a, on a contract. Like, don't push so me. he said, OK. So yeah, I think he, he probably called my wife and and asked if if everything is okay. <laughs> <laughs> what what, what time frame was time time what time frame was all this in? Like what month? Do you remember? It was in November. Was yeah. it before it was or after the hackathon? Before. Before the hackathon, I mean, and it was give the, me the week scoop? before on, my man. wedding. Oh, before man. my wedding. Yeah. And I'm like, Tal, Ooh. there's no way. What? what? What are you trying to do? What are you trying to kill me right now? The, the vision of a second layer uh, was there before the of, of not a second layer, but rather a, a multi-layered future. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. something that we we envisioned. I think before the the launch. When talking among ourselves, uh, among the co-founders, uh, we understood that, like in the internet era. We have a new ecosystem, which is the blockchain, and there ought to be multi-layered solution on top of these blockchains. It's not a one uh, uh, solution only uh, place. Where that's what Tal was mentioning regarding multi-layered ecosystem uh, that combines not only the EOS uh, mechanism but other mechanisms on top of it. Uh, and we uh, will dig into Liquid Apps as well, but Liquid Apps is also designed in a way that allows multi-layer solution on top of it. And that's what will bring this system, this whole ecosystem to become much more scalable, much more viral. And we can't even imagine <laughs> the projects that are, gro are going to grow on top of this uh, in the future. I, I just, I can't forget hearing how uh, Tao came up with this idea. So Tao, whenever you first like got this idea in your head and you started trying to code it, how little did you sleep for like the next three days, <laughs> next week while trying to like actually build this out after you had the idea in your head? Nah. No nah. sleep. No I remember uh, before the launch, I think Benny tweeted it out or something, just like a whole trash can filled with Red Bulls to get the DAP network <laughs> launched. I, I, I can imagine it was like that when you first thought of the idea. And it's, and it keep refilling. There's, uh, there's, we still have a lot of work to do, as, uh, to 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 bridge the gap, uh, to bring the the best developers. I think the 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 concept of of this multi-layer ecosystem, or it's it's like the equivalent of in software of of standing on shoulders of giants. Um, we see it in software in general where abstraction layers make the make the life easier for the next abstraction layer and and it evolves to a point where uh, things that used to take days uh, 10 or 15 years ago now take a single line of code or, or take uh, five minutes and and I think there's there's still so much potential in in optimizing the our world, the the blockchain world, um, and to learn from first to learn from the same evolution that took place in in the internet world in, and in the software world in terms of of very highly abstractions, uh, very high levels of, of abstractions, um, both that and in the first levels were the resources management level and the operating system levels to learn and to take the existing knowledge that, that's been done on, on in, in kernels, uh, basically to, to, to introduce the same mechanism 
tailored for for the blockchain yeah. uh, infrastructure. Um, and paging is is only the beginning. There are so many mechanisms that I can't even count them that that exist in in that 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 do the magic behind the scenes in your kernel that just by introducing them without inventing too much new stuff, there's so much potential in, in optimizing uh, to a point that we believe it's actually going to be an, a real alternative to, to, to cloud hosting and even more than a, uh, uh, an alternative because it has the benefits of, of having a, um, being trustless and and uh, and decentralized and potentially immortal, potentially uh, robust to a point where nobody owns it. Like a, a Amazon account is owned by someone. A lot of times people compare EOS to Ethereum, EOS versus Ethereum, but the competition here is, is like the AWS of the world and like the the Google Cloud services. Like that is what is risk of being disrupted here and, right. so, and, and even even a, a, um, a lower layer than that I compare EOS to the Linux kernel not not just specifically to to a framework or to, to an actual operating system um, and it's more it's closer to an operating system than it is to ethereum or to uh, a platform for transacting uh, every half a minute, um, and a, 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 as much as Ethereum was was uh, is groundbreaking, um, there's not much you can do in terms of of uh, trying to scale um, um, complex operations that 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 uh, the service requires, where every operation costs gas. That's mm -hmm. just not feasible. Um, like it's not pra if if I'll go to a friend of mine who's an entrepreneur, and and now he's, he has a, a dilemma because it's 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 not far fetched that he that he will uh, now consider doing his business or or his infrastructure on the blockchain. Um, but when he's when he's reading about it, or when they're reading about it, and they're getting into the details and the unit economics, it, it just can't compare it. It's just impractical for for most apps, and and I think it's uh, it's crucial that we close this gap, and I think it is definitely feasible to close this gap. So like this is. I know it's, you say it's a multi-layer solution. It, it feels like a layer two solution in some ways, right? It's got some characteristics. It's, it improves scalability. Um, it kind of it sits on top without the underlying blockchain need to needing to change things or you know approve its existence, uh, right. things like that. So it reminds me of a lot of layer two solutions we're seeing on. I mean, in some ways, Lightning, you know, things like that. But uh, but this has the unique characteristic. Of being a layer two solution that doesn't centralize things, but actually sure. improves decentralization, which I think is fascinating because uh, in EOS, especially, and in some other communities, you say layer two, and people immediately think a centralizing like uh, compromise to achieve scalability, right? That's that's what they think right away, and this is a layer two solution that improves decentralization and if our listeners don't know can you can you go a little bit more into to how that works and uh, is that a fair characterization uh, sure I, I think uh, VRAM specifically is a solution um, it definitely has all, all those characteristics the DAP network and the DAP uh, the DAP network itself uh, we, I kind of see it as, as an, uh, a very abstract mechanism to provide both the model and the, and the interface and the technology to build layers and to build abstractions in general. I can definitely see a situation where uh, different DSPs will use each other um, for different uh, abstractions. For example, I, the first layer could be very specialized in resources, and the second layer of DSPs can use the first layer of DSPs that 
provide resources to provide more applicative kind of applications. They're more specific to, to niches. Um, so, in fact, it's, it's, it will cause uh, the ecosystem to become uh, multi-layer by itself. So, in that sense, we see it as the mechanism to build layers in, in general. Not uh, and Vram um, is is another layer in, in this in this uh, in this metaphor basically. So I was just in Hong Kong, and when I uh, explained our solution to people, they immediately tried to frame it as either centralized or a sidechain, regardless, by the way, if they understood EOS or they came from Ethereum. Hmm. And uh, it took me a while to have them understand that it a new frame that they don't know yet. Uh, because when I, Tal and I spoke about uh, uh, the implementation, uh, there were a lot, of, a lot of issues that were raised. And the two that were really important to the both of us, so one of them was not to introduce any uh, 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 additional layer of trust to the system. And the second one is to make it as seamless as possible uh, to the users. And uh, it was, that was the mindset uh, uh, of the team while uh, uh, building this uh, system. And that's something we're trying to bridge uh, in between our understanding and the world understanding uh, of this new frame of a decentralized second layer solution. So right now on Ethereum, on Tron, on EOS, on whatever DAP platform you're talking about, uh, we talk about decentralized apps, they generally mean that just the smart contract is decentralized, right? The important stuff, right? The things you want to keep free of censorship, whatever. Uh, but there's a lot of centralized things along the way from uh, other databases to the front end. Uh, and th when people think dApps, they already think this, you know, it's already only a part of it's decentralized. But you guys had a recent article that talked about using IPFS, using the dApp network, to make the entire application tr trustless, decentralized, uh, yeah. from not only not only the contract and other databases, but all the way up to the front end, so that uh, these things are trustless, can't be compromised, and so on. Uh, can you tell me more about how how you accomplish that? Um, uh, sure. So a, a couple of months ago, uh, even way before the 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 DAP network. Uh, we released an article and, and a contract um, that allows uh, contract developers to associate a front end that can be on IPFS or anywhere else. But we, we encouraged um, everyone to, to basically host their front end on IPFS and associate it with their contract. So it will be official. To the, the point you're, you were mentioning that if a part of your system is off-chain and it's the weakest link of, of being trustless, mm -hmm. then, your entire, then your entire system is trustless. Um, it, for example, if someone hij hijacks your front-end, it doesn't matter if your application sits on your, on, if the backend sits uh, on the blockchain. It can be as safe as possible, but the entry point is, is compromised. Um, same goes for decision-making in games. Uh, if, you, if you believe that only game items should be, um, if you believe that only game items should be um, hosted on the chain, um, I think that uh, you're missing a, a big aspect of, of the opportunity which is to, to build logics, the game logic, which is, which is decentralized and, and potentially couldn't be cheated by anyone, not even by the, the game owner. And for me, it's really interesting. I, I find it really interesting because it opens up a possibility to do even um, more unique things like Having two games collaborate on their economy and on their even gameplay without mm. trusting each other. So it's like a, a dual mode game um, 
it's it's the same way that the, that uh, I think it's going to disrupt B two B processes, because now you can create uh, something that two companies can collaborate without building their relationship uh, to collaborate. Um, it's I think it's it's going to be the same the same for games. Now that's that's blockchain in general, um, but specifically in games. There's, there's a data-heavy requirement. Um, luckily, you only need to access the data while you're playing. So, so I think in that, in that aspect, um, trying to rely on the RAM itself as, as, as a single source of data to, to scale games, for example, is, is, uh, is, is not a very... Uh, Scalable, not in terms of, of uh, not even in terms of, of the cost of resources, but in, in terms of the unit economics to 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 even start a viral engagement loop. Uh, you mu- you must be able to to onboard people. You must be able to to let your users bring their friends. I think that's. Uh, the basic building block of every uh, strategy of every web-oriented business out there right now. B, try to use your users for distribution. Um, and, and until we, we, until we as, a, as a community solve this issue, um, I think, that, I think it's, there, there's a big barrier. So naturally, after we, we solve this barrier, all those unique opportunities of not just migrating existing models and, <clears throat> and things from the old world, but trying but start experimenting with, with the new models, like like EOSBET did with, with the dividends. And uh, I think there's so much potentials to disrupt. We never saw um, this kind of uh, collaborative behavior or social uh, dynamics or economics evolving in that pace. We, did, we, we didn't have the platform. Like software we used to evolve in that pace because, because the process was in place. But now we can actually do the same for things that rely on trust and relationship and that none of us can, can, can imagine the, the, the real potential. Uh, you know what we're dealing with the dappiness one of the things that came up to my mind right away was anti-cheating like tal said anti-cheating is a, a huge industry uh, a lot of games there's a lot of you know uh, resources expended on preventing the players from cheating and uh not, not an industry that's maybe not the right word but you know a huge field and uh, it's everyone deals on uh, some games deals with annoying pop-ups that say are you a bot or not you know solve this little puzzle um <laughs> and so that kind of the uh, the anti cheating potential for me is something that's really interesting. Uh, but mm-hmm. like you said, the the possibilities are probably the biggest possibilities are things we haven't thought of yet. When we first introduced VRAM, uh, in general, people kind of told us that it's not necessary. Hmm. They said, you know, we should pay twenty k for an airdrop. Because they said, you know, the largest DAP only needs 90 megabytes of RAM, so that's fine. There are actually people who are saying that we should pay uh, 50K for an airdrop, because otherwise the coin itself doesn't worth anything. Yeah, we heard a lot of things, but what I'm trying to to, to, uh, say here is we didn't even imagine yet what are the possibilities of endless RAM, because until now, Okay, until VRAM was introduced to the world, all the DAP developers were sure that RAM is expensive. And they envisioned their DAPs in a certain way in which RAM is a scarce resource. Mm -hmm. We cannot use a lot of it. So we see a lot of gambling apps because gambling do not require any memory. Okay, not a lot anyway. As a contract dev, I do all kinds of things like, you know, it, you do a lot of things implicitly. Like if I if I can get away from storing it 
and just, you know, kind of act like it exists, even though it's not stored, then I do. Um, and you also, you delete things liberally. You know, <laughs> Yeah, so I get what you're saying. We, we've all grown to think that, like, RAM should not be used if at all possible. Exactly. And we're trying to say, guys, ladies, uh, uh, there is no reason to keep thinking that way. That wraps up part two of this three-part series about the DAP network. Stay tuned for the grand finale. You are not going to want to miss it.